I'm up at our six acre site today doing some maintenance around my mom's home, trying to make sure the gutters are clean, you know, basic stuff that there's air and light coming to the house. I uh, have had a lot of rain, a lot of warmth, and so I want to make sure we're doing some infrastructure preservation work. And that inspired the thought to share what I'm up to right now and share a cautionary tale. The hardy kiwi, really wonderful, amazing fruit, pretty destructive to infrastructure you care about. I would not plant these near a home. Let me explain. Somewhere at the bottom of this amazing, beautiful, abundant, gorgeous, fantastic green pile of vines is the root system of a female hardy kiwi. I think I planted this in 2010, so this is now a 14-year-old vine. It's been cut really hard once or twice in the spirit of at one point, uh, my father cut it really low and I was upset. And I was like, oh, you're going to kill the plant. Certainly didn't happen. Um, this was a trellis in here. You can kind of see the, the skeleton, the ancient bones of it. It was black locust posts. If I can find a picture, I will put it. It was beautiful uh, and absolutely not appropriately strong for the long-term holding of something as beefy and ridiculous as a hardy kiwi. And now that the trellis is gone, it's basically sprawling on the shrubs around it. That's not a big deal. But this is what the issue is, is that it grows so incredibly fast. Almost all of this is this year's growth, and we are just in the second week of June. I've seen this happen before. It will get itself between the gutter and the home and start prying that apart as it swells. It'll work itself into crevices, and then once you cut it and leave it, it'll rot in there. So having the hardy kiwi adjacent to a home like oh it'll be beautiful we'll have shade in the summer we can sit out on the patio and we can have a lovely meal and the kiwi fruits will just fall right into our ice cream and it'll be a perfect permaculture design i wouldn't put this plant near your home there's a cousin to the hardy kiwi so i'm speaking about um actinidia arguda which is the standard hardy kiwi there's the super hardy kiwi or arctic kiwi which is I'll put it on the screen here. I can't really pronounce it. Um, that is considered to be a little bit less aggressive and intense. Maybe something to design with near a home as a shade element. Share comments below if that is your experience. Uh, I can't speak to it one way or another. We've planted the Arctic Kiwi and they don't seem to be strong in our landscape. Hardy Kiwi, however, extremely strong and pretty rough next to your home. But what about where do I actually plant it? Well, uh, that's another one I'd love to hear folks' thoughts. What I would not do is plant it in the woods. Don't let them grow on other trees. They are kind of like structurally parasitic. They will pull plants apart. It's compelling. It's an amazing nutrient focusing thing. It's like a, a like a collapsing star of energy. <laughs> like it pulls everything into itself. Um, what about a trellis? Like for example, in this lawn, if we wanted to have a nice seating area, we mow the area around it. There aren't trees within. 20 or so feet. Uh, the trellis isn't tall enough to be next to power lines or adjacent to that, and we promise to manage for a bit. That feels like a place for the hardy kiwi shade on a very, very robust arbor system that is an island in an otherwise mowed context. That's where I'll put them in the future. And I definitely won't do this again. It's another cautionary tale of, okay, I talked about the female kiwi on a nice little dainty trellis. What a beautiful thing. Not a good move. I'm going to slowly bring that plant down. Um, maybe not erase them, but it let, definitely not let them grow unchecked. I gave the male partner for that female this chestnut to grow on, and this has been an extremely poor design decision on my part. Uh, this is the chestnut in here. Every year I have to cut really hard to release the chestnut from the binds of that male kiwi, uh, all of that tangle and dead in there. The chestnut's fine, but you can kind of see it almost looks like a, the way poison ivy or Virginia creeper would climb or uh, oriental bittersweet. It's just kind of going right on up there with a good woody stem and it'll tighten and tighten on the cambium layer of the chestnut and kind of girdle and kill and bring down that canopy. So let me make that mistake and you don't repeat it. I feel like way back when I planted this and I was like, oh, I shared with folks. It's awesome. You just let the kiwi grow with the chestnut and then it'll work out perfectly. It's a male. This is dangerous. I want to be incredibly clear in sharing these notes of my personal experience of like, hey, I don't think that this plant in this context is the right move. Do not confuse that with the idea of I think these are bad plants. I know these are technically illegal in certain spots. I still have a huge affinity 
and find these plants compelling. The fruit is phenomenal. They're extremely assertive in their ability to grow. I put the onus on myself as being a poor, two poor design decisions in working with the innate nature of that plant body and how they interact with others. And that's on me to rectify and resolve and then design something that's a little bit more intelligent and thoughtful and deferential to the needs of the plants around. Do not let them grow on otherwise food forest scaffold elements and the infrastructure that we have. Don't let them grow in and amongst the board and batten of a barn or as a shade element over a home. A standalone trellis that is extremely robust and long lasting in an area that's otherwise mowed or perhaps a, a meadow that you never mow but it's left in an herbaceous. Maybe it's a bobolink beautiful territory and there's little pergolas in there of hardy kiwi. Cool, awesome. It's our responsibility to interact with these plants in thoughtful and um, responsible ways and think about them through that lens. So anyway, hardy kiwi, awesome plant. Don't put it near your home. Don't let it grow on a chestnut. Thanks for watching.